Let me lean on you. 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 My body is tired. My soul, my soul needs resting. Let me lean on you. Let me lean on you. My body is tired. Let me lean on you. 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 Body is time. to get in the song with us because we're all in the same boat. We're heading home. Whether you know it or not, we're heading home. Like you. 
you said you would. I get tired sometimes, Lord, on my way home. Oh, I get tired sometimes, Lord, on my way home. I get tired sometimes, Lord, on my way home. Come on and fix it, Jesus, fix it like you said you would. My friends, they get Sometimes oh, I'm on my way home. Oh, my friends, they get few sometimes. Oh, on my way home. My friends, they get few sometimes. Oh, on my way home. Oh, 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 fix it, Jesus. Fix it like you said you would. Come on, oh, fix it, Jesus. Fix it, Jesus. Said, fix it, Jesus. Fix it, Jesus. Oh, fix my heart now. Fix me, Jesus. Fix my tongue now. Fix me, Jesus. Fix my mind now. Fix me, Jesus. Fix my mind now. Fix me, Jesus. I'm on my way home. Oh, on my way home. On my way home, y'all. On my way home. On my way home. Oh, on my way home. Fix me, Jesus. Fix me like you said you would. I have to cry sometime. Oh, on my way home. I have to cry sometime. Oh, on my way home. I have to cry sometime. Oh, on my way Jesus fix it like you said you would. Come on, fix it, Jesus. Fix it, Jesus. Fix it, Jesus. Fix it, Jesus. Do it for me right now. Fix me, Jesus. Fix it, Jesus. Fix it, Jesus. I know you can do it. Fix me, Jesus. Fix it, Jesus. Fix it, Jesus. Oh, do it for me right now. Fix it, Jesus. On my way home. Oh, on my way home. On my way home, y'all. On my way home. On my way home. On my way home. Fix it, Jesus. Fix it like you said you Fix it, Jesus. Fix it, Jesus. Come on, fix it for me right now. Fix it, Jesus. I know he's able. Fix it, Jesus. But come on, Jesus. Fix it, Jesus. But fix it for me right now. Fix it, Jesus. Fix it, Jesus. Fix it, Jesus. Oh, do it for me right now. Fix it, Jesus. On my way home. Oh, on my way home. On my way home. Oh, oh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Say it one more time like you. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I feel good. I ain't felt this good since yesterday. Praise the Lord. It is good to be in the house of the Lord. One more time. Give God a hand clap of praise this morning. This is a day that the Lord has made, and we shall be glad in it. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. I am so thankful this morning. Uh, I woke up closing in my right mind. And our hearts go out to those who are bereaved this morning. Those who are sick and shut in, our prayers are with you also. Those who are incarcerated. Lord, we ask that you come by Flag Chapel this morning. We got a nice crowd here, and it's good to see so many of the faithful kind of slowly coming back in. Amen? Let's give God a hand. We have to praise again. Yes, yes, yes. Because... I see a lot of people there 
at sporting events, they're at cookouts, and they're everywhere else, but I ain't going to church. I ain't going up in there. Well, this is where we come to get saved. You know, I like to look at Monday and Tuesday. That's first base. Uh, Wednesday and Thursday. That's second base. Thursday and Friday. Friday and Saturday. That's third base. I'm going to come on home on Sunday. I'm going to try to make it home on Sunday. I'm going to do my best to do that. Um, to all the ministers of the gospel in their respective places, the deacons, the nurses, the missionaries, and this wonderful congregation, I want to say thank you for allowing me to bring the word this morning. Again, and I feel good every time I get a chance. Last Sunday was Easter Sunday, and being that Reverend Lee's the pastor here, we let him have those big days. Yeah. Let him, let him have a big piece of chicken. Man. Yes, yes, yes. If you brought your Bibles this morning, go to the 23rd Psalm. And if you got to say amen. Twenty-third Psalm. You can read along with me if you wish. The Lord is my shepherd; I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. Leadeth me in the path of righteousness for His name's sake. Yea, though through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for Thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepare the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anoint my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. I chose this morning as a sermon topic just what the doctor ordered. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come now to say thank you once again for allowing us to congregate together as one, to try our best to be on the same accord. We ask that you allow your Holy Spirit to come and dwell within this place this morning, Father. I want you to speak to me and through me. Let it be more of you and less of me, Father. I ask that you touch some. Father, we thank you for your many blessings. And let us come now and bring the word. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 I chose this morning the topic just what oh, for the past years or so, I've had to go and see doctors. I like to think of doctors as God's mechanics. We tear it up and we go to them to fix it up. I've heard people say, when I get sick, don't send me to Ball and Country. Take me to make it. I want to go to Emory. You can go anywhere you want to, but if you ain't got God, you might as well have gone back home. And I was thinking about the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Okay, my shepherd, he watches over me. And the wanting part, I'm 63 years old. At this age, I've got everything I need. Come on now. You 60 some years old and you ain't got everything you need, that's something wrong. Now, everybody has got wants. I got a few. I want my wife not to be mad at me when she gets back home for scraping that dent in that truck. But it ain't gonna help, no. 
I can want all I want. She's still going to pull her lips. But I thank God that the wants in my life are small, minute now compared to what they used to be. I want health and strength. Just a little fair portion of it. Thank you for that. I, I appreciate God for that. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still water. Now that's green pastures, not green store. Because my pastor, he ain't green. He light skinned, brother, by this tall. <laughs> pastures. Lay out in a field and put my mind at ease because that is just what the doctor ordered. He leaded me beside the still water. He gonna let me be beside the still water because you heard that old song, still water. He know I can't swim. That's just what the doctor ordered. He restored my soul. When I got here, I was tore up from the flow up. Still tore up, but it's just not from the flow up no more. Amen. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. I thank him for leading me on that narrow path of righteousness. Because I was all out there. I'm one of them that like to cut across the grass. I ain't going to take the sidewalk. He, and, and, and he leads me, it, me, excuse me, for his name's sake. That means that I'm one of his representatives. That wherever I go, there are people that are watching me and how I carry myself. So for his name's sake, I want to do his blessed will. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Been there, done that. Been some places that ain't had no business being. People talking about, I went somewhere and I know God, God went in there with me. Because he knew he had to bring me out. He knew he had to bring me out. I walked through the valley of the shadow of death. And I didn't fear no evil because I knew he was with me. His rod and his staff, they comforted me through all my trials and tribulations. And it does that right now. When the doctor says, uh, told me one time, says, you know you ain't got this six months to live. He sent me the bill. I looked at it. I said, man, I can't pay this in six months. He gave me six more months to live. I can't pay this. Y'all ought to quit. Thy rod and thy staff that comfort me. Thou preparest a table in the presence of mine enemies. I can go over there and sit across something from somebody who hates me. Who wish I was dead. And I could just sit there and go, nanny, nanny, nah, nah, boo, boo. <laughs> because my God, my God has got me. He's got my back, he got my front, he got my side. Thou anointed my head with oil. And he ain't got to use too much oil on my head. Praise the Lord. My cup runneth over with joy, love. Peace, happiness. It's not a material overflow. It's a spiritual overflow that God has put on me. And that cup runneth over. And here we go with this. Y'all ready? Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. His goodness and his mercy is what I seek constantly. What a lot of people fail to do is when you do wrong, repent. Right then and that Lord, please forgive me. That was a, no, I'm not going to get to that. And, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That means after I've done all I can do down here, there's somewhere that he's went and prepared a place for me. He said, he told his disciples, I'm going to prepare a place for you. In my father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not, I would have told you. 
And I believe today with all my heart and all my soul and all the fiber of my being that God is who he say he is. And he can do what he says he's going to do. Well, just about the doctor. You know how doctors can always prescribe medication for you. They can always tell you, take this three times a day for so many days until the prescription runs out. Well, that was this doctor one time, and he, he was a successful doctor. And he gave out prescriptions to his patients and whatnot and told them how to take it three times a day and to just do what the bottle tells you to do. Well, the doctor got to the point where he had some problems where things weren't going the way that he wanted them to go. The hustle and bustle of all the things that come out of doctor. He was upset because of his receptionist wasn't taking messages like she's supposed to. The appointments weren't going well. So it came down to, well, the doctor had to go see a psychiatrist. So little did the doctor know that the psychiatrist he was going to see was a godly man. So what he told him to do was read the 23rd Psalm every time that you have a problem in your life. If there's stress, there's strain, read the 23rd Psalm. It'll inspire you. The doctor said, well, he's not a real godly man. So he thought he'd try it. When I first got my prescription, you know, I didn't want to take that medicine. I didn't want to take what was prescribed to me. So what I figured, what I thought I might do, I'd just go ahead and take a week's supply of medicine at one time and be done with it. But it don't work like that. So the doctor thought he went back to the run of the mill lifestyle that he had. And instead of reading the 23rd Psalm three times a day, he figured he'd read it those 21 times in that week and call it quits. And that'll fix everything. But it don't work like that. So, in essence, the doctor had to do as it was prescribed to him. You've got to do what God has prescribed for us. This is just what the doctor ought. See, doctors are practicing medicine. Dr. Jesus does not practice. He gets the funky job done. Because when I called on him, he answers. I was in the hospital, and they was talking about running some tests and doing this and doing that. I said, let me call my pastor. I seek God first. I said, Reverend, I need you to pray for me. I said, I'm up here in a tight, and if you can help a brother out, I'd like to leave here tomorrow. And I prayed. They looked at me crazy when I told them that I felt good, my chest pain was gone, and I want to go home. You can give that bed to somebody sick. There ain't nothing wrong with tight. It was just what the doctor ordered. But then I remember when there was a doctor that gave me a medicine called Entreste. You've seen them advertise for TV. I took Entresto and almost died. I was told that maybe you got to get used to it. I took one of them things that scared me to death. So, my cardiologist told me that the next time someone prescribes something for you, you call me first. Sometimes it's good to give a second opinion. Because all doctors don't know everything that's good for all patients. But does God, God Almighty knows what's good for you at all times. Let's give him a hand clap of praise. Regardless of any ailment, regardless of any sickness, I know people who are in wheelchairs who have a better spirit than someone who's able to walk around and go as they choose and they're talking about, oh, Lord. Oh, little old me. Amen? And to, to think that you got it bad, get out sometimes. Look around. That's somebody that's got it worse than you. But God has been good to us in a mighty way. Through sickness, through death, through all things that have come in our life. 
God has given us what we need at all times. And to look out this morning to see so many of us faithfully allowing the process to do what it does and that we safely come back and congregate with one another. You know, they, they, they've uh, taken the uh, restriction, the mass restriction from the public um, transportation and things like that. Well, let them do that. But until I feel safe, when I go somewhere, I ain't doing a whole bunch of hugging, I'm bumping fit, I'm not trying to get away from you. And if you get too close to him, I'm going to let you know, uh, sometimes in a spiritual way, that yeah, you make it back up a little bit. But God has been good throughout. Uh, our heart goes out to those people who lost family members due to the pandemic, you know. And um, we are just grateful here at Flat Chapel that, you know, God has blessed us in a mighty way. And looking at you this morning, you look good. But God has been good. He has been very good. God has prepare the table before the presence of mine enemies and that he has anointed me and he's helped me through my spiritual walk to be a better person to try my best to be a good Christian um, I remember the other day that was this young lady she had on a nice little tight fitting revealing outfit and when she well, I knew her and I was trying to see if I Knew where I knew her from, but it was not the person I thought it was. It was her daughter. But anyway, when she walked out the door at the store, I looked at her. So the cashier told me, now, Reverend, you know you ain't got no business looking at that woman like that. Well, I'm here to tell you, I was looking at her because of the fact of one thing. I'm a man. I'm a man. And I didn't try to run behind and get a phone number and ask what time we could hook up or nothing because I like pretty women. And I'm just running the shop and I ain't going in the store. You know, I ain't going in the store. Any, any, any heterosexual man is going to stand here and tell me he don't like to look at a pretty woman. Something wrong with that food. Now, I can see if you with your significant other and you reckless eyeballing, you might get slapped. But it's, it's not one of those things where this is something that I remember the Lord was my shepherd and I see what I want. And it's not, it's not about that. And, it, you know, um, being a minister, you have to be very careful about how you carry yourself. Because a friend of mine said, you going down to the store? I said, yeah, I'm going to run down here to the store. But, well, play this number for me. Why you want to send me to play? <laughs> and so here we are. I know you got temptation. And I'm like, okay, I'll play. Give me the money, man. Uh, you know, I'll play it for you. So I played it and whatnot. I didn't know you. I said, yeah. Well, I have played a few times. I won a few times. And I put my little percentage in the cheeks. And I ain't running around thanking God for nothing I won a lot. I ain't thinking to do that. But I am grateful on this day that I know that the path that God wants me to travel is not one of hanging out at clues and making it my business to be at every party and to be uh, one of those people who just got to have the party started. I was talking to a friend of mine the other day. I said, why don't you come go to church with me, man? I ain't got no money. When did you need money to go to church? You know what? They, they'll go to a cookout. They'll take chicken. They'll take potato salad. They'll take a 12-pack. And they ain't worried about the money they spent on it. But they worried about the collection plate coming around. I don't understand that. I don't understand that. It, this is a place of worship. And, you know, people think that people at Black Chapel are bougie. Well, we're not. We are some of the most down-to-earth people you ever want to meet, just like you are. And we have, a lot of people have different professions. And um, we are, we, you are welcome here at Black Chapel. We open our doors to anyone at any time to come and worship with us. 
And when you come here, we want you to make yourself at home. This is the place to come. Because there's two places, I'm, three places I know I'm going to try to find me some peace. At my home, in my church, and in my grave. I'm going to find me some peace there. And when I come here, I'm going to jump, I'm going to shout, I'm going to sing hallelujah, and I'm going to be grateful that God has given me the opportunity to just be in the number one more time. Amen. I'd like to sing a song for you. Um, a song that um, I uh, learned some years ago. We used to sing it. Uh, it's called One Day at a Time. One day at a time, sweet Jesus. That's all I'm asking from you. Lord, teach me today. Show me the way to what I have to do. Yesterday's gone, sweet Jesus. And tomorrow may never be mine. Lord, teach me today. Show me the way one day at a time. I'm only human. I'm just a man. Help me believe in all I can be. In all that I am, show me a stairway. I have to climb, Lord, for my sake. Teach me to take one day at a time. One day at a time, sweet Jesus, that's all I'm asking from you. Lord, teach me today, show me the way to what I have to do. Yesterday's gone, sweet Jesus, and tomorrow may never be mine. Lord, teach me today, show me the way, one day at a time. Do you? remember when you walk among men well Jesus you know if you're looking below it's worse now than then cheating and stealing Violence and crime, Lord, for my sake, teach me to take one day at a time, one day at a time, sweet Jesus, that's all. From you, Lord, teach me today. Show me the way to what I have to do. Yesterday's gone, sweet Jesus, and tomorrow. Be mine, 
Lord, teach me today. Show me the way one day at a time. Go in peace, my brothers and sisters. May God bless you. Hallelujah. Just what the doctor ordered. Let's give Reverend Clark a round of applause for the fine message this morning. Thank you so much. It's a joy just to be back in God's house. And, and the congregation is growing. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. I can't wait for the day when we can see all of these pews full from the back to front and the choir stand. Yes, the whole place. And I'm saying that that won't be long. God is in the blessing business and, and he is blessing even right now. Thank God. Thank God for you. Pray that you've enjoyed the message this morning and you understand what it is that the doctor ordered. Dr. Jesus don't, don't know how to do anything but fix it. And um, he'll do it one day at a time. That's all that he gives us. One day at a time. Thank you for coming. Thank you for tuning in wherever you are this morning. And I pray that God continues to watch over you and take care of you. And at this time, I'm going to ask you to stand for the closing song and the benediction. All right. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever Amen. Amen. Grace of God, the love of Christ, sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with you, his people, now and forevermore. Let every heart say amen. 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 And amen. Now, I don't know whether that was me with that bad singing or Nate with that bad playing. <laughs> Thank you, Nate. Thank you to our musicians. God bless y'all this morning. And I praise the Lord for just being here. I know that my voice is hoarse and I can't half sing anything. So I'm going to take that on myself. Amen. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs>